everybody and welcome to another episode of Wayne's World of Science and Technology. Today, I'm not starting off by swearing because I actually want this video to spread as far as possible. And I would like to welcome you to the Permanent Floating Monster Club. The Permanent Floating Monster Club <sighs> comes from a problem. The problem is that we've got this information spreading all over the internet. We need to put a stop to it, and we actually have the power. Um, Darren Gertis has been doing videos on how to reach the delusional. I like Darren. He's a really nice guy, and he gave me an idea to write down and share what I'm doing, which is um, a different way. Basically, what it comes down to is you have to fight fires by smothering them. How do you smother them in information? Simple. Bury it in reality. You'll complain that there are too many sources. And yes, for one person there is. But there's already a bunch of people working the way I'm going to tell you. And we outnumber the misinformation sources. Another point is that we have been basically, uh, how should I put it, surrendering these spaces to the misinformation sources because a lot of people have been basically saying, oh, don't interact with them. You'll help spread them. Sorry, folks, that does, that's not what's happening. We're not interacting with them, so they're spreading because the people are going looking at it going, oh, there's no one pushing back against us. Maybe there's something to it. You have to push back. So, how do you smother misinformation? First, find a source. Comment on it. Tell them they're wrong. Uh, exactly how you tell them the wrong is up to you. I can't advise you on what's going to work for you. Everybody is different. We all have our own personalities. What feels right for me may not feel right for you, and what feels right for you may not feel right for me. That's just the way it is. We all work differently. So do it your way. And if you don't feel you can do it, because let's face it, there's going to be a lot of pushback and there's going to be people who don't have the personality to handle the pushback, spread this so that people who can handle the pushback see it. If you can't spread it on social media, talk to your friends about it. The point is, we do outnumber them by a considerable margin. And they've been having the... Um, a lot of areas free. Anyway, um, you probably don't want to imitate me. Um, YouTube keeps handing me unnecessary one day bans for unnecessary roughness. I can even get banned by must free speech Twitter. Yeah, I'm a bit of a loose cannon. But, as I said, there's a lot of us. And you don't have to do it my way. Do it your way, however you feel comfortable. And keep it up. You don't need to comment every day. And you just need to comment often enough that they know you're there. And that will have an impact on what they decide to do. They meaning the misinformation sources. It's also going to have an impact on people who drop in, look and go, oh, somebody's arguing with this. Uh, maybe it's not so uh, wonderful after all, because what we're really trying isn't to go after the misinformation sources themselves. We're trying to get to the people who they are attracting. That's who we really want. Uh, once you find one misinformation source, you won't need to search for others. The algorithm on every social media site out there will feed you more victims, I mean, or uh, disinformation sources to uh, debunk. But keep hitting the same for your targets. Let them know they're, that you are there, that you are regularly there, that you are monitoring them. Let them know that you specifically have targeted them. Here's what it's going to do. First, it breaks into the echo chamber. I've looked at these tons of these sources. Most only get comments from people who agree. And I mean, it really is an echo chamber. You can go in places on YouTube, and the only comments you will see will be from people going, Oh my, this conspiracy is absolutely 100% real. 
and there's no one giving pushback. You have to get in there and give pushback. Um, you have to have context too. It's silly things like in the Russia Ukraine war, they say, oh yeah, we know Russian military production ramps up. And it's like, well, uh, pardon me, but one smaller NATO country is building 600 armored vehicles per year for, for Ukraine. Can Russia build 600 armored vehicles per year? Um, maybe, maybe not, but that was one smaller NATO country. What about the rest of them? Think about it. You add that sort of context, people start getting going, oh, okay, now I see what you mean. Um, and this lets the people on the edge who might not have bought into the uh, conspiracy yet know that there's strong arguments the other way, that they really should think about it and, well, look at more than just this uh, echo chamber. Now, there's a bonus if you manage to be the first person to comment. Anyone who looks at the comment will see yours first. And YouTube tends to show shop top comments in the app. If yours gets the most replies, it'll be the top comment. If yours is the first comment, guess who's likeliest to get the most replies? Yep. Now, these people are pushing a narrative. We've got to push back the counter narrative. Let them know that, yeah, there's other views out there that we think that they are wrong. You know, a lot of these people are generally convinced that they are right. They're operating off a delusion, but they are convinced they are right. Uh, pushing back lets them know that there's a lot of people disagreeing with them. Sometimes it may get them thinking, sometimes it may um, cause them to reduce the number of their uh, posts or videos or whatever. The point is, you have to push back. Because if you don't push back, well, they'll consider that maybe they're right. By commenting, you're going to disturb their echo chamber. You're going to force people in that echo chamber to start thinking. Um, and contrary to popular belief, there isn't really that much difference in intellect between Einstein and the average person. Einstein just learned how to think logically. And before you start yelling, oh my, Einstein was so horrendously intelligent, just think, there really wasn't, genetically, you probably couldn't tell much difference between Einstein's brain and yours. What happened was, when he was a kid, he learned how to think in a different way, and what you learn as a child wires your brain. And yes, I could give you, I know those people are going to be at me because I'm not giving a chapter and verse here, but that is the way it works. You know, effectively what we're going to be trying to do with these people is we're going to be trying to teach them logical thinking and basic research. We're going to teach them to look beyond the surface. You know, they're looking at the shiny object. They're not looking at what's underneath the shiny object, which often is a pile of junk. Uh, we're not going to reach everyone, but we can reach enough people to start swaying public discourse. Uh, one of the things we'll never know, of course, is how many people we reach, because a lot of people we reach won't say anything. They'll just go, oh, okay, and wander off and do something else. But that's fine. We just need to reach some. If you think that, uh, how should I put it, a lot of elections in many countries are often comes down to less than 5% of the population what they think. If some of these people are in that 5% of the population and we help them out of delusion and have them be able to learn how to think, yeah, that has a big effect. And you have to understand there really aren't all that many people on the delusional side. Yeah, there's some, but the vast majority of people who, um, how should I put it, back one particular party or, or another, aren't delusional. It's just the um, extremes. And uh, a lot of them are actually getting quite shrill. And um, 
they know that they are outnumbered. They are desperate to get more people in because they just don't have the power. And they know it. They already know they're in the minority. We shrink the recruitment numbers and shave off the not totally committed so they get fewer views. That reduces the number of new people the algorithm will show their jump to. And guess what? The few people who do see their junk are going to see your comments. Yeah, it has an impact. It may not look like it. It may be a small impact at first. It's like um, the first uh, snowball rolling down the hill, or the first stone that starts the avalanche. Uh, loss of followers is going to cause some of these people to drop away from the cause. And that's going to cause a further loss of followers for other people. And, well, hey, you got to love virtuous cycles, especially when they're on your side. And decentralization. This is a decentralized effort. I didn't invent it. I'm not running it. All I did is I'm just trying to steal what I've seen others do and what I've done myself and do a document you guys can spread. You can download this presentation from my Patreon, which there's a link in the video description. For that matter, you can cut and edit this video and use parts of it. Go ahead. I'm happy with that. We want to spread this as far as possible because there's a lot of us and we can and will make a difference. Just to give an example, um, with the Russia-Ukraine war, people are saying, oh, I can't make a difference. Well. The good folks at NAFO are out there running bloody bake sales to supply Ukraine with the uh, vehicles. Guess what the Russian backers are doing? Nothing. That's the difference. Volunteerism works. We can and we will make a difference. You know, as I said, a lot of these people exist in an echo chamber. Well, basically, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be shoving sound editing uh, material into that echo chamber. And uh, we're going to bring reality into the online conversation. Oh my word, all these people died of the COVID jab. Uh, right. Let me see how you work these numbers out, little boy. Come on, show me your evidence. If your evidence is some video cut by somebody who doesn't actually provide any evidence, like a link to a scientific study, that's really not much help. you got to get them to actually show evidence. And they've got to justify the evidence they're showing you, because they will try and show you evidence out of context. Because they won't know what the context is. It's a big problem. We have an issue with um, education, people don't understand context and how to work out the um, basics. You know, it's uh, too many people basically are operating off what they heard from Bob at work, who heard from his fifth cousin's third wife at the pub. Uh, yeah, you know the routine. And uh, another thing is you cannot use the mainstream media against these people. Most of them avoid the mainstream media like the plague. They don't think it's real. Okay, they don't want to think scientific studies are real. They aren't going to think um, reports on oil uh, shipments are real. They aren't going to think anything's real, because that's what they're going to tell you. But you keep on smacking them with this stuff, and it does get through. And so because of the distress in the mainstream media, you can't use a debunking source. Corporate websites, industry organizations, uh, all that sort of thing. It's just wonderful information that you can use. There's an immense stock of information out there on the internet on who is really doing what, and it is amazingly accessible. Think legislation. I've seen tons of arguments over what a piece of legislation meant, but how many people actually read the text? They didn't know what it meant. They were getting excited over nothing. And that's the sort of thing you have to turn around and say, okay, here's what the words say, and push it at them. Quote the actual text of your source, link to it. Pound them with facts, 
verifiable facts, not what some bloke at the pub told them. You won't convince most of them, but you will kill recruitment with facts because the people who aren't already in the echo chamber are going to see those facts they are going to say, oh, I didn't know that. That makes a difference. Now, you're going to get a lot of pushback from these people. When someone truly believes, it can be disconcerting to get slapped with the fact that disagrees with what they think. Some of this pushback is going to be pretty nasty. Uh, I really don't recommend getting into some of this unless you have a thick skin. Uh, I notoriously have a thick skin, but hey, that's me. Some people are not going to be able to do this. It's, it, it depends on your personality. If you can do it, great. If you can't, support those who can to the best you can. You know, facts are nasty things. If people tell you you see flying elephants, well, <laughs> yeah. But if you tell me people how many different species of elephants that there are, provide references, it's different. It has impact. That is the sort of facts that they can look at and go, oh, I see what you mean. You know, facts can be unpleasant. Your car won't start and you have an important meeting at work. That's an unpleasant fact. But denying the fact that continuing to sit in your car just is not feasible. Facts are nasty. Toss facts into the debate. Too often facts are totally lacking. People just ignore it. You know, like a smelly dead fish, facts tend to get noticed. And these people are going to try and refute the facts. And hopefully in their digging they find more and more confirmation that yeah, those facts are real. When they come back to you, always insist they provide primary sources. A YouTube video by some random person, like me, doesn't really cut it. I mean, let's face it, I have a certain amount of knowledge, I'm trying to share it, but do you know that? There's always that question. You've got to search for sources that are reliable, and you've got to show people sources that are reliable. And facts are the winning tactic. Reality is the winning tactic. If somebody out there starts arguing with you, ask them, would you follow a route that you uh, planned months before and then stop sitting there because, oh, they took the bridge out for uh, construction purposes while uh, between the time you made your plan and uh, when you actually even did the trip? No. You'd use your navigation software to find a way around. Well, heck, your navigation software would have already found you a way around. You wouldn't have used the map in the first place. But you said, keep pounding on the facts. Facts matter. Hit them with facts. Pick your arguments. Uh, that's another important thing. Stick to areas you know the best at first. Expand later. If you don't know anything about a particular area, Skip that particular argument because not knowing and trying to say you know something is really bad. You know, don't push yourself too far because while you're teaching them, you're going to be learning yourself. Every day I turn around and I go and I'm looking for more and more data. It's like, oh, look at this neat site. Wow, it's got all the oil revenue data. Useful. Or, Oh, isn't that nice? That site has all the information on transparency or migration. Or it's just so much fantastic information. And these people are ignoring it. So use it. Learn from it. Teach them. And have fun. Well, you're teaching these people, you'll be able to torture them. <laughs> Learning to think can be really painful. Yeah, I'm a mean old guy. Injustice, death, and all that sort of thing tends to put me in a really foul mood. And yeah, under circumstances like that, torturing people by teaching them how to think, that sounds like a great idea. Putting a kink in the injustice mach machine, and uh, you really wouldn't believe what some of these people think of women by uh, torturing folks or uh, teaching them to think. Yeah, sounds like a good idea to me. Sounds like fun. <laughs> In closing, yes, you can make a difference because you aren't alone. 
there are already a lot of us out there. All I try to do is refute a few more and get them to refute a few more to break up the misinformation chain. We had a few more people here, a few more people there, and we can really make a difference. So, please share this video presentation as widely as you can. If you can translate into other languages, hey, that's a bonus. That would be really useful. Whatever you can do to help is going to be greatly appreciated. We will make a difference, and we will stomp on the misinformation machine and kill it. Anyways, have fun, folks. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Fear seeing to Putin in handcuffs before the International Criminal Court. Unlikely, I know, but hey, I can dream. I have a dream. I wonder if I built a prison for international criminals like Putin, would they come if I built it? See you later, folks. Bye-bye.